What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at legal problem number 1393 capital gain loss marked as medium. Let's get into it. Now this problem is for all my Wall Street bets fanatics that like the stocks because it's about the stock markets. It's also recently being asked by Robin Hood even though there are some controversies around Robin Hood right now. Anyways, we have a table called stocks which contains stock name, operation which is an enum that can either be buy or sell. We have an operation day and we have a price that this stock has been sold or bought for. Our task is to write an SQL query to report the capital gain or loss for each stock. Capital gain or loss of a stock is a total gain or loss after buying and selling the stock one or many times. Turn the result table in any order, the query result format should look as follows. We have a stock name and we have capital gain loss in here, which tells us the entire balance, so to say, of what stays after buying and selling that stock. So let's go through an example. Lead code stock was bought at day one for $1,000 and was sold at day five for $9,000. Capital gain would be 9,000 minus 1,000, summing up to $8,000. Let's take a look at the rows in the stocks table we have here we have a lead code buy operation for 1000 and then a sell operation for 9000. So it seems like we just subtract buy from sell. In this case we only have two entries. If we would have multiples we would have to make the calculation multiple times. For example for Corona masks we have six entries in here. Buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. It seems like we always have a sale operation for a buy operation so these are always complete and in the end there are no stocks being held anymore but let's just get into coming up with a solution. So since our result table format should contain stock name we're just going to select that from our stocks table and then we want to take care of this capital gain loss. So let's see how we come up with that. Given the example we just went through, we pretty much want to subtract buy operation from sell operation. And we have a field called operation in there that can either be buy or sell. We don't have separate columns for that, which is a bit annoying and we need to work around that. So let's do that. So what happens, what I usually think of when I have that kind of problem, having a certain value being price but that being dependent on a value in another field being operation. So I want to do something with the price value depending on the operation value. So I'm going to use if here. You could also use case, when, then, and in other SQL dialects or in MySQL as well, but if is a bit shorter. So this if statement is going to check for the value of operation. And if that operation is by, it's going to be yeah, by operation and we add that value to our sum of bought stocks. So if that condition is true we want to take price and if it's not true we're gonna take zero since that means it's a sell operation. I'm also gonna do the same for sell so let's put them in separate rows for now just to show you what I'm doing. It's gonna become clearer in a bit but let's just call that buy and that other one will be called sell and I'm going to check for sell. Okay so let's run that to see what it gives us. We have lead code in here 1000 as buy and zero for sell. We also have it in here as zero buy and 9000 sell so that works the way it's supposed to. Now why did it, that is if we use sum on this operation we will get the total sum of all stocks being bought and sold. So let's do that for these two uh, for buying and selling and call them total buy and total sell. 
and see what that gives us. So now we should only get one value per stock if we group by stock. So let's group by stock name. Just forgot to do that. And we should get the entire amount of price we we paid to sell and buy these stocks. So we bought lead code for 1,000, sold it for 9,000, bought Corona masks, stocks worth 2,010 and sold them for 11,510. And we bought handbags for 30K and sold it for 7K. So now we just need to subtract that again to get the entire capital gain loss. Because if we take the entire sum of what we got for our stocks, which will be uh, the total sell column in here and then subtract what we bought these for we should be left with what we have in the end and the amount of money we made or lost so let's just remove the comma here and the names we came up with for these and we said we're gonna subtract buy from sell so let's put sell in front I copied that and we'll paste it here put it minus and then we're going to call that capital gain loss. Sorry. Running that should be an accepted output. It is. And if we submit that, it should also be an accepted solution. And that's pretty much it for that problem. It's just about handling these buy and sell operation by using if. And that is a common pattern you have in many lead code problems. There are some about purchases in certain month. So we're going to check the date for being in May and then if that is the case you're going to take the price and otherwise zero. So this pattern of having an if and either taking the value of zero is something you should understand and probably apply to other problems as well. And it's one of these tools that allow you to solve these types of questions where you have a certain value that decides what you're going to do with another value. And that's it for that problem. As I said, if you want to study some more, check out my playlist on lead code easy, medium and hard problems I have on YouTube. So I have one playlist for each difficulty and videos on problems in there. And also make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of these videos and be notified when new ones come out. I'm aiming for three videos a week, by the way, and hope I'll see you in one of these coming up. Until then, bye.